In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Hello, everyone. I'm Father Alan Wearsba, the Director of, of uh, Formation for the Diocese of La Crosse. It's my pleasure to be with you today as we celebrate the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on, on earth, earth peace, peace to people of goodwill. goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his ways and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, Lord. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For me, life is Christ and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which I should choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet, that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in the way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you too go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, these last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Bishop Robert Barron once spoke about how the game hide-and-seek gives us a good understanding of our readings today. In hide-and-seek, the one person who is it counts to ten and then searches for the other players. For the person who is it, the game is like a great quest to find the other persons. We like to seek and find things, treasures and deals of all kinds. Now we're even seeking treasures out into space. The game of hide and seek is about finding, but it's also about another great need in us, that deep need for us to be found. Hide and seek style games are a part of every culture in the world because seeking the unknown is built into us by God. We have a need to seek God 
and God likes being sought after. As our good shepherd, our Lord seeks us out whenever we are lost. And if we don't come to him, then God comes to us. The prophet Isaiah wrote, Seek the Lord while he may be found. To seek is to look. You have to move to find. And we cannot move with the Lord if we're going to stay where we are. If we're going to find the Lord, then we have to listen to Isaiah and seek the Lord. In God's love, though, he'll come looking for us as well. Jesus told a parable about workers in the marketplace. The landowner, God, went to the marketplace to find the workers, not just once, but several times. First at dawn, then about 9 o'clock, and around noon, and around 3 o'clock, and finally about 5 o'clock. Instead of the workers seeking work, they were hiding in the marketplace, and God found them. What's more, it didn't matter when they were found, they were all paid the same wage. God's wages are mercy, forgiveness, wisdom, healing, refuge. No matter when we find God, or when God finds us, we are given the full measure of these wages simply for the asking. Another form of the game of hide-and-seek we play with babies is called peekaboo. But sometimes babies get scared when their parents hide from them. It's as if, if I can't see you right now, then you have disappeared from my life forever. Just because we may not see God in our lives right now doesn't mean that God has left us. God hasn't found some great hiding spot where he's hunkered down and giggling and pleased that he's outsmarted us. No, God doesn't play that way, because God wants to be a part of our lives forever. It doesn't matter what time of day it is, or even what time in our own lives it is. Young or old, the invitation is always there for us to seek the Lord while he may be found, to call on him while he is near. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christ, the new Adam, has destroyed sin and recreated us in his image. United to him, let us offer our prayers to God the Father. For Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the elected leaders of our country, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose lives are endangered because of war, poverty, abortion, euthanasia, terrorism, illness, or other persecutions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick or suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions submitted to our, by our viewers at home, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love, all life comes from you and finds fulfillment by returning to you. Grant that the prayers we make in Christ's name hasten the coming of your kingdom, and assist us in glorifying your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Where 
truth, love, and charity are found. God is always there. Since the love of Christ has brought us all together, let us all rejoice and be glad now and always. Let everyone love the Lord God, the living God, and with sincere hearts let us love each other now. Where true love and charity are found, God is always there. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Ave verum, corpus natum, de Maria Virgine, vere passum, immolatum, in cruce pro homine, cuius latus perforatum, fluxit aqua et sanguine, est nobis pregusatum, mortis in examine. O Jesu dulcis, O Jesu die, O Jesu filii Mariae. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.
Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Mass this morning is taking place at Materi Demptoris House of Formation. Here at the House of Formation this year, we'll have 11 seminarians who will be in formation with us here, as well as 13 of our own seminarians in seminaries in the United States here and over in Rome. Please do keep these men in your prayers as they are preparing and forming themselves to be in the person of Jesus Christ and to be your future priests. We ask that you continue to pray for vocations of all sorts, vocations to the married life, to the diaconate, to the religious life, and certainly more young men to step forward to be priests for our diocese. God bless you all. Thank you. Hi everybody, Bishop Callahan here, expressing my gratitude and that of the entire diocese for you joining us for the celebration of the Mass each and every Sunday. The televised Mass is our way of reaching to you and hoping and praying that with you, God's blessings are going to increase in whatever way you may need them. We ask for that blessing for you and for yours and for your family. God bless you and thank you again for your support.